To drive in Germany, you need to be 18 years old. So if you're 17, wait until your birthday. You need to take your driving license with you. If you've got a full UK driving license, you don't need an international driving permit. But if you don't have the photo card, if you have the older paper style, you may need to get one of those international driving permits. Take proof of insurance. If your car is insured in the UK, it should include some kind of European cover, but call your insurer to make sure. You don't want to take chances there. You don't need a green card though. A green card is an internationally recognized proof of insurance. If you want a green card, you can contact your insurer and ask for one, and they should send you one, but usually they'll charge you some kind of admin fee. Take your V5 registration logbook with you. That's to say you're the registered keeper of the vehicle, and also take proof of your MOT. When driving in Germany, you must take high-vis jackets. They must be inside the vehicle, so they're accessible without getting out, and enough for how many passengers there are. Also, take a warning triangle. This can be kept in the boot though. You don't have to keep this inside the vehicle. This is a triangle, you take it out, unfold it, and you put it behind the car when you break down. GB stickers are no longer acceptable. You have to have a UK sticker. If you have GB on your number plate with either a Union Jack or the EU flag, the stars in a circle, that's not acceptable either anymore. If it's on the car, it doesn't matter. You can just put a UK sticker on the back and that will be fine. However, if you have UK on your number plate with a Union Jack, you don't need a UK sticker. Make sure you take stickers for your headlights as well. If you drive on the left like you do in the UK, the beams are brighter towards the left. Now you're driving on the right, you're going to be blinding oncoming cars. So you have to put stickers on your headlights to stop that happening, unless your car has a flat beam like this one. Children under three in Germany must be in an appropriate child seat, and if they're over three, they must be in the back. If they're under 12 and under 150 centimeters, then they must be in a suitable child restraint like a child seat or a booster seat for their height and weight. If you're worried about driving on the other side of the road, a good tip is to try to remember what side you're closest to. Because my steering wheel is on the right, I sit close to the curb. So that means whenever I get to a junction, I think, well, I'm gonna get myself next to the curb, that way I'm gonna be on the correct side of the road. If you were hiring a car, the steering wheel would be on the other side of the car because that's where the steering wheel is in Germany. That means you're gonna be next to the middle of the road. So whenever you get to a junction, just make sure you put yourself next to the middle and your passenger next to the curb. That way you'll be on the right side. In Germany, winter tires are compulsory in wintry conditions. You need either winter tires or all season tires. There's no set dates through the year, like say December to March or something like some countries. It's literally just in wintry conditions. So if it's snowy or icy and you don't have these tires, then you're not allowed to drive your car. The drink drive limit in Germany is lower than that of the UK. It's 0.05 in Germany, but 0.08 in the UK. But it's recommended that you don't drink anything because even just a glass of wine or a pint of beer could put you over the limit. In Germany, the speed limits are done in kilometers per hour. In town, it's 50. Outside of town, it's 100 kilometers per hour. When you come into a town, there will be a yellow sign with the town name. You know it's 50. When you get outside of the town, that same yellow sign will have a black cross through it, or it could be a red cross. And I think it is a black cross, a line straight through it diagonally. That means it's now 100 kilometers per hour. The autobahns are unrestricted. Well, some of them are, about 50% of the autobahn is unrestricted, but there is an advisory speed limit of 130 kilometers per hour. I do find the speed limits here though are a little bit fussy. And what I mean by that is they change for very short stretches because 50 in town, 100 outside of town, that's just the standard. If there's a sign, the sign overrides that and you must follow the sign. And quite often, you can see the sign change by 20 kilometers per hour and it changes again 10 seconds later. And that's what I mean by fussy. They seem to change the speed limits often. And when you're on the autobahns, there is usually a lower speed limit when you get near an exit or an entrance to help traffic merge. So there's rarely really long stretches of truly unrestricted autobahn 
you do find lots of speed limits on them. And I'm just about to come up to one of those signs now to say I'm exiting the village. It is actually a red line, not a black line. There we go, so that red line across that yellow sign means that now it's 100 kilometers per hour because I'm out of town. But there's actually a 50 sign there now, so that overrides that. So it is still 50, so I must keep it within 50 now until I see something else. Now that I'm editing the video, I've noticed that there's another village name above the village name with a red line through it. So that likely means I'm coming straight out of one village and going into another, which is probably why the speed limit is still 50 kilometers per hour. So now I'm in a village with a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit. They're quite common as well. I was driving through Stuttgart and there was quite a few 40s in there, which is about 24 miles an hour. It's very slow. People don't seem to stick to them though. It's a bit like the UK with the 30 limit. Most people don't seem to stick to it. They seem to do a 35, maybe a bit more. And that seems to be what people are doing here. I am sticking to it and I've got a massive queue of cars behind me. I don't think they're very happy. Generally though, German drivers are courteous. I've only been papped at once with the horn and I am a wandering tourist who doesn't really know where he's going. Mobile phones are not allowed in Germany, or at least you're not allowed to use them whilst you're driving, although hands-free kits are allowed. If you have a sat-nav and it can detect speed cameras, that should be disabled, and speed camera detection devices are not allowed. According to the .gov UK website, in 2019, on German roads, there was 3.7 deaths per 100,000 people in the population. That compares to 2.6 deaths per 100,000 people in the UK. So it is safer to drive in the UK, you're more likely to die on German roads, but then they do have stretches of unrestricted autobahn. So there's no surprise there. And far more people die on the autobahns of Germany than they do of the motorways of the UK. As a petrol station at the moment, in Germany, petrol is called either E10 or E5, as it is in the UK, and diesel is called diesel. So no problem there. Although at the moment, fuel prices are sky high. So maybe a little bit of a problem there. One service station I pulled over at, um, per litre E10 was two euros 40. Quite a bit. Of course, the road direction signs in Germany are in German, but the road signs themselves are very similar to the UK. So triangles for warnings, red circles for what you should not do, and blue circles for what you should do. You do get a different sign though. It looks a bit like the national speed limit sign. It's like a black stripe across a white disc, except it's not a single black stripe. There's five individual lines. That usually means end of restriction. So if you get five individual black lines over say a no overtaking sign, that means end of no overtaking. Or if you get it over a speed limit sign, it means the end of the speed limit and the 50 in town or 100 out of town then applies. If you see this yellow diamond with a white border, that means you have priority over cars coming from the right. Because in Germany, generally you give way to the right. Although it doesn't seem to be the case anymore because at just about every junction, you get that sign. It's only really in town, on very small, slow streets, old roads, where you're likely gonna have to give way to the right. Like in the UK, if a bus signals to leave a bus stop, you should let it out. Don't slam on the brakes and cause an accident, but if it's safe to give way to the bus, let the bus continue. If the bus has red flashing lights and it stops, you should wait behind that bus. That's a school bus and you'll wait whilst kids get on and off the bus. And the no overtaking sign in Germany applies to vehicles with more than two wheels. In some parts of the world, if you want to turn right at a red traffic light, you can. Of course, that's if you drive on the right. You wouldn't be doing that if you drive on the left. But in Germany, you can't. If you have a red light, you must stop. 
Germany is famous for its de-restricted autobahns. Around about half of the autobahns are de-restricted, although there is an advisory speed limit of 130 kilometers per hour. Generally on the autobahn, people are doing around about 120 kilometers per hour, but be careful of the outside lane because you do get the odd car going very fast. Don't just check your mirrors once. Check them at least three times to make sure that car that's in the distance isn't approaching you at speed. But as is the case in the UK, when you have finished overtaking, if there's no one else to overtake, you should move back to one of the right lanes. You should be in the right lane when you're not overtaking and use the left lanes to overtake. Having said that the de-restricted zones are quite short, I've just been on one for probably about 15 minutes, made some really good time, just coming into a 120 zone now. Actually, road work's gonna go down to 80 now. Although my car didn't really like doing that high speed for that long, because it says blind spot monitoring system malfunction. Hmm. Hopefully when I turn the car on and off, that will sort itself out. 60, and generally that's a good point. Through roadworks, it's 60 kilometers per hour. At least that's what I've found, and I've driven from the north of Germany, and now right down at the south, and quite often it is 60 or 80 kilometers per hour. And that's what cruise control is very handy for. What I have found is when you go into a road work zone, you get the low speed limit. They don't tend to tell you when the low speed limit no longer applies. You leave the road works and there's no sign to say 120 or de-restricted, nothing. So I'm guessing, as everyone starts speeding up as well, once you're through the road works, then that's the end of the restriction. Like many countries in Europe, some cities have low emission zones. I don't know how to pronounce the word, so I'll simply write it on screen. Check that out before you go, because you don't want to get a fine. What is nice about the German autobahns is you have toilets, like here. There's a place to park and go to the toilet. You don't have to always go to a service station, which can save time. Simply go off into the parking area, don't have to go through a convoluted uh, network of roads and car parks and then through a big service station past all the shops. Simply park up, go to the loo, get in and you're on your way straight away. I like that. Earlier I said German speed limits are a little bit fussy and what I meant by that is that they change really quite often close together. Something else to be aware of is that there's speed limits for specific times. Like if it's wet sometimes you will see a speed limit and underneath it says when wet in German. So I'll try and write that word on the screen now so you know. But also it can be for certain times of the day. It's done in a 24 hour clock. So it might say 80 kilometers per hour, um, seven, which would mean seven in the morning to 15, which would mean three in the afternoon, 3 p.m. So watch out for that too. In Germany, the emergency contact number for the police is 110, and for fire and ambulance, it's 112. Currently in Germany, there are no tolls for cars on the autobahns. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that. In Germany, a car is considered parked if it's stopped for more than three minutes. Try to make sure you leave at least five meters from a pedestrian crossing, 10 meters from traffic lights, and 15 meters from a bus stop. I'm not entirely convinced that this is true yet, but I've heard it from several sources. But cleaning your car in Germany is banned. I'm sure if you're visiting, you're probably not gonna start cleaning your car, but it's something you need to obviously be aware of. Don't know why you would ban this. Seems like quite an innocent task to me, but there you are, you've been warned. If you wanna clean your car, you have to take it to a car wash. What's nice about driving on the de-restricted sections of the autobahn is that you can relax and cruise at a speed you feel comfortable with. 
you don't have to keep glancing at the speedo to make sure you're within a set speed limit or you may get a speeding ticket. It's not about trying to go as fast as your vehicle can handle. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out confused.com in the description if you're looking for car insurance and European car insurance. Subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.